you can see, this engine is filthy, disgusting, dusty, dirty, buggy. But besides that, we've got very stiff wires. That's no good. Uh, they're probably corroded down there. I can't see. The motor turns, not really voluntarily. The truck's power truck. I was able to get the wheels to turn, but extremely stiff. So I'm thinking they're all gummed up. So that's, ooh, more bug, yummy. So that's that's my guess is that uh, all the years of sitting, it's just filthy and needs a good cleaning. So this one's starting dirty, gross, disgusting, and not moving. So let's see how it goes. So I've been working on this engine for a while. Um, it will run fantastically once it's moving, but it has a hard time getting going, uh, where the motor will just not want to turn. You can hear it start to engage and then it just doesn't go, but if you push it, it will start going. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where the problem is with this unit. I swapped the brushes, I swapped the armature, and still I'm having the same issue. Um, so what I'm going to do now is start swapping other parts to see if I can isolate the issue and what is actually the faulty part. Um, it seems to me that at this point there's something wrong with the bottom part, uh, the field, maybe the winding is no good, I'm not sure. I'm going to swap the motors out of these two engines because I know this one works well. Um, I had already swapped brushes, I had swapped armatures uh, with no luck. So at this point I'm going to swap the motor from one to the other and that will help isolate the E units and the pickups and the wiring and all that. Um, so I'm going to do that and we'll see what happens. Decided the leads from the E unit. Should move that for now. Swap the motor from the known good engine over here. Okay, so a temporary motor swap. Let's hit it with some power and see what happens. Okay, so you might say, what the heck was the point of that? Well, what did we just do? We just isolated the fact that the problem is in fact in that motor and not anywhere else in the, in the engine, which what's that eliminate? Uh, a little bit of wiring and the E unit. So those are fine. So we can put this motor back where it belongs and then continue looking at this. So considering that I have swapped the armature and the brushes, what else can I do? I can swap brush plates and see if that helps. I don't think it would, but you know, it's probably a good step to take. So let's do that. And this is also just good for basic, you know, repair experience as far as figuring out 
what parts have what effect on the engine as a whole. Um, I mean, the great thing about these post-war engines is there's not a whole lot involved, but it still takes some decent basic diagnostic skill to isolate the issue. And as you have more experience doing that, uh, you need to spend less time swapping parts because you'll have a better understanding how everything works. Probably should put the armature back in and some brushes. So the process of swapping out the parts brings you down to, hopefully, the part that's actually causing the issue in its smallest form. Okay, those wires are on at least for the moment. Let's get that test track back over here. So what have we done now? We're back to the original motor. We're just, we swapped the brush plate. And we are still having the same issue. So let's break this down again. So what I'm down to at this point is having an issue somewhere in here. The wheels spin freely, the gears aren't binding. I don't think that's the problem. It's just here in the in the winding, I guess. So I'm gonna have to look up what to do about that because honestly, I'm not really sure. Other than making sure the ends are properly stripped of the coating, I'm not sure what else to check. Uh, there is some spreading between the plates here. I do not know if that's going to cause an issue. It's on both sides. There's a very little bit of spreading on the other motor, but that one runs like a dream. So this engine did not work at all when I got it. It runs nicely once it's moving, but it has a hard time getting the armature to spin. So I'm going to clean it up again, uh, clean off these wires, make sure the tips are good, and go from there. Okay, uh, as far as I know, um, the way you would check the windings is as follows. Uh, you get a multimeter, and I could be totally wrong on this, so correct me if I am. You get your multimeter, set it to resistance, and you want to check if there's an open or excessive resistance in the coil. We've got a lead on each end. As if you can see, it says 0 0.7. That's less than one ohm of resistance. Uh, so that should be good. Any connector, any connector or a section of wire shouldn't have more than one ohm of resistance. Um, the other thing you can do is check to see that it's not shorted to ground. And it does not appear to be. Keep in mind, once you put the brush plate back on and screw it down, it is no, then no longer isolated. So what happens is, if you have the motor all together and you have the ground attached, now when you check it, if you have the lead in here, you'll see now that I have less than one ohm of resistance again which means that's got good conductivity from one end all the way to the ground on the other. So now we're not checking the coil the same way. So that's what I had done with this while I had it apart. Um, and I got very similar readings. So I don't feel that there is either a short between the coil and the end ground and I don't feel that there is a break in it either. Um, I do not know offhand of the spec that these are supposed to have as far as resistance. Uh, it's, I'm, go I'm, I'm going with the assumption that anything less than one ohm is good. So I got very similar readings on both units. So the only thing I'm really left with is, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm at a loss. Maybe it's clearance between the plates and the armature. I don't know. 
So at this point, I've exhausted my diagnostic knowledge. So I'm going to put this engine back together uh, so that I can use it. And because this one works, uh, this one, as I said before, it runs once it's moving. So <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm just going to put them both back together and run them for a while and see what happens. If you have any idea what's going on here, uh, what I may have missed, what I may have done improperly, what I forgot to check, let me know in the comments because uh, I'm always willing to learn because that's a big part of this. I guess you can't win them all. Not everything is going to work out and you're not always going to end up with a great running engine, but that's okay. Uh, can't win all the battles. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to fix it. And next time I get an engine that has a similar motor, I will swap parts around again and see if I find something different. Uh, in the meantime, maybe I'll learn from somewhere what this issue is and how to properly fix it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you in some of your diagnostic tasks and trying to fix your engines. Um, if you have any other questions about taking these apart, checking out different components, let me know in the comments. Please don't forget to subscribe and like, and see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.